Hi, welcome back to Pastor Wagner's weekly video blog. Uh, today I would like to talk about total depravity. And if you've never heard of that before, um, that's basically a fancy term to say that man is a sinner. He's dead and trespasses and sins and incapable of doing anything good. Now if you look in Romans chapter 3, the Apostle Paul here talks about mankind in general under sin. And he says there in, in Romans 3 and verse 9, What then? Are we better than they? No and no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. So he's talking here about mankind in general, Jews and Gentiles, all men, all nations. And he quotes here from Psalm 14, and he says in verse 10 of Romans 3, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So of all mankind, there is none righteous, no, not one, he says. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. None. There is not one person in their natural state that understands or that seeks after God. So that's going to make it pretty difficult if you're trying to preach to somebody and get them to understand and to seek God if there's none that do that. Isn't that right? It says, They are all gone out of the way. They are, t they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Not one single person that does good. So let's look at a few things that the natural man cannot do, and we've already seen he cannot understand. Let's go over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 briefly and look at verse 14. 1 Corinthians 2.14 It says, But the natural man, that's the man without the spirit, the man that's only flesh, he's just natural only, just in his natural state, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So the natural man cannot know the things of the Spirit of God, like the gospel, and the, the, um, the, the gospel which tells us about our eternal life given to us by God. He cannot know those things, because those things are spiritually discerned. They're spiritually understood. You have to have a new spirit within you to understand them. You see, in verse 12, it says, We have uh, now... We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So those who are God's children have received a spirit that's not of the world, but, they, but a spirit that is of God, that we may freely know the things that are given to us of God. So if we've been given that new spirit, we can freely know the things given to us of God. But... Verse 14, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, their foolishness unto him. So, if you preach a gospel to him, how is he going to understand it if it's foolishness to him? It's not going to work out very well, is it? And that's what Paul says there in 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 18. He says, for the preaching of the cross, that's the gospel, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it's the power of God. You see, there's two different classes of people there. There's people that perish, who are natural men only, who are not saved. And the preaching of, to the, the, preaching of the cross to them is foolishness. But to us, to us who are saved, it's the power of God. But how do you get saved? That's the thing. If the gospel preached to you is foolishness, and it makes no sense and you don't understand it, how are you going to get saved? How is the gospel going to become the power of God to you if when you hear it, it's foolishness? You know, Jesus said that those who are not his children cannot hear his words. Let's look at that over in John chapter 8. John chapter 8, he's speaking to some Jews here, disputing with them. And he's been telling them things that are very plain, and they just they don't get it. They can't understand. And he says there in verse 43, Why do ye not understand my speech? even because ye cannot hear my word. He didn't say you will not. He said you cannot. They didn't have the ability to hear his word. Well, they understood it audibly. You know, the, the, the vibrations went into their, their ears and, and those signals went into their brain, and we know that because they got angry at him from what he said. So we know that they audibly heard it, but they didn't hear it with understanding, and there's a reason for that. In verse 47, he says, He that is of God heareth God's words, Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. They could not hear God's words because they were not of God. They were not born of God. You have to be born of God to hear God's words. 
which makes sense. You have to be born again. You have to have a new spirit in you that's alive because the spirit in us right now by nature is dead. Look at it, look at it over in Ephesians chapter 1, or chapter 2, pardon me. Ephesians 2 and verse 1. See, this is, this is this death that we inherit from Adam. It says here in Ephesians chapter 2, And you hath he quickened, that means to make alive, quickened. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sins. See, people that God quickens, they're dead. They're not physically dead, but they're spiritually dead in trespasses and sins. Dead people can't do anything. Dead people have no ability. If you preach to somebody, uh, to a corpse who's dead in a grave, He's not going to do anything about it. He can't hear. And it's the same way with somebody spiritually dead. It is, it, they are by nature a child of wrath. They're born that way. Verse 3, Ephesians 2, 3, Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. It says in Romans 5, 12, That by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so that death passed upon all men. For that all have sinned. Through Adam's sin, it passed upon all of us, and we were all born spiritually dead. So if it is true, what people tell us, what most Christians tell us, that you just have to hear the gospel, and you have to believe in Jesus Christ, accept him as your personal Savior, and then you'll get eternal life, you'll get to be born again, well, wait a minute, that gospel's foolishness to the unregenerate, to the person that's not born again, they can't hear it, they can't hear Jesus' words, and furthermore, they can't believe. They can't believe because they're not his sheep. Jesus said in John chapter 10, to some more Jews here in John chapter 10, he said, but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. You see, you have to be a sheep to believe. He said you don't believe because you're not a sheep. He didn't say you're not a sheep because you don't believe. You don't get to be a sheep by believing. You get to believe by being a sheep. You have to be a sheep first. Jesus has to make you a sheep. He has to call you out of death and trespasses and sins. He's got to take that goat, that old nature, and make it a sheep. Once you're a sheep, then you can believe. See, the sheep are the ones he gives eternal life to. Verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any, shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The sheep are the ones he gives eternal life to. You have to be quickened. Jesus, by the power of his voice, has to quicken that dead sinner, that dead soul, just like he quickened Lazarus when Lazarus was in the grave for four days, and Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus couldn't do anything about it. He couldn't hear anything. He couldn't do anything. He couldn't, he couldn't accept anything. He just, that effectual voice of Jesus Christ caused his dead body to rise again, and it's the same way. And this is what I'll, I will close with. Jesus said, by the same power of his voice, this is how a person gets new life. This is how a person becomes quickened and born again, that they can hear the gospel. In John 5, and verse 25, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is. See, this was a present reality at that time. It's coming, and now is. The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. It was happening at that time. The dead, this would have to be the spiritually dead. He talks later in verse 28 and 29 about they that are in the graves. He's not talking about the physically dead. He's talking about the spiritually dead because it was happening at that time. They hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Not might live or could live, shall live. They live, they're quickened out of their death and trespasses and sins. Then when the gospel comes to them, it's the power of God. It's no longer foolishness. You have to be saved first. So a natural man, apart from grace, cannot hear, he cannot believe, he cannot understand, he can do no good until Jesus saves him first. And that is a, just a very short synopsis of total depravity and salvation by grace. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week again to hear another pastor's video blog. Thank you.